lead us away, Dale. Oh, thank you. Hi. Um, Lee, the, the team must be really keen to bounce back from Saturday, come, this coming Wednesday. Of course they are, yeah. I think um, you never come away from a defeat or a weekend not feeling like that. Um, we're all really disappointed with how Saturday went and, and the best way you can repay that is by putting in a performance and getting a win as soon as possible to, to forget about that. Did it, did it come as a surprise to you, the, the performance on Saturday? Yes, I think so, yeah. Um, I think in recent weeks our performances have been pretty good. Um, we haven't got the results that maybe we wanted or we think we deserve, but I didn't see that performance coming and I, I went to Gillingham fully expecting us to, to do better than we did, but these things happen in football and we have to move on. So as captain, do you, well, you've spoken to the rest of the squad about it as well? Uh, not at the moment, no, because obviously um, it's still pretty raw from the weekend. Um, I'm... I'm one of them. I'm not a big fan of, of doing it straight after the game. I think you have to let the emotions settle down and then you have a sensible discussion on a Monday morning. So I'm sure as soon as we get to training today, that'll be the time to, to go over the weekend. And there's no better way to react than with an FA Cup tie. It's, that, it's still a magical competition, isn't it? That's it, yeah. That's, like I said, the, the next game is the FA Cup and we all know the history with this place and the FA Cup. So um, there's no better way to, to move on from, from the weekend and, and have a a night under the lights in the FA Cup here with Central Bank. Yeah, and, it, and in Ipswich, top of the league, but it's going to be another difficult game, isn't it? It is going to be a difficult game. Ipswich are a massive club at this level and they've got a, a great manager, a great squad of players, um, but it's the FA Cup and, and we've proved we can compete with anyone in a one-off game and, and that's exactly what we'll be looking to do on Wednesday night. And there'll be a, a particular buzz around the place, particularly remembering the last time Ipswich visited Central Bank. That's it. That's, that's exactly it. Um, it's the FA Cup, isn't it? And, and like I said, Lincoln have got, got memories that, that we'll, ne we'll never forget from that. So if we can draw on that experience and hopefully replicate that on Wednesday night, then, then people will leave happy. When, when the, the first game was played, Ipswich made many changes. Do you, do you expect them to make that many again? It's difficult, isn't it? Um, they're obviously flying high in the league and to make them changes in the first game, you, you can anticipate that. But uh, like I said, you never know what they're thinking or what they might do. So we, we'll have to be prepared for both scenarios. Uh, and as a squad, where does the, the FA Cup rank on list of priorities this season? It's right up there. I think um, you can never underestimate the, the magic of the FA Cup and you see what a good cup run can do for a football club and, and how Lincoln went from strength to strength on the back of that one. So it's something that we'll be trying to emulate and we'll be doing all we can to try and get through to the next round. Uh, and for you personally then, on the recovery from injury, I know you played last week, how, how are you? I'm really good, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'm good. Um, do you know what, I'm in a real good place with my groin. Um, I think I'm in a place now for the first time in nine months where I'm playing without any groin pain, um, but more importantly, I'm not thinking about my groin. So to get through that game the other night was a, was a massive thing for me. Not only to get through it, but to wake up in the morning with no groin pain, that was, a, that was a big thing. So I'm in a place now where I'm not worried about my groin, I can kick my left foot, I can do all the things that I want to be able to do to play a game of football, and to be in that place in your own mind is a, a good place to be. And, and just describe briefly the, the journey to recovery, you, you were out for quite a while before last week. Yeah, it's difficult. Um, I think it's the, the longest I've ever been on the sidelines in my career. And I think, I think any footballer will tell you, being injured is not a nice place to be. I think it's the, the, well, yeah, it's the worst part about playing football because you can't affect anything that's going on in the football pitch. Um, your mates are outside playing football every day and you have to sit and watch. And it, mentally it can be difficult and it can be challenging, but I think you always have to remain positive and know that the end goal is to be back on the grass. And, and thankfully I've done that period, I've done my hard work and all that's paying off and, and now I'm back fit again. And is that, I know it sounds daft, is that the main motivation, the fact that the love for the club, the love for football that gets you through the tough times? It has to be, yeah, because if you don't, then what, what do you do? What's your, what's your end goal? You have to be prepared to, to do the hard work and you just have to pitch yourself playing football again. And on the days where you don't want to... You don't want to go in the gym and you don't want to do your slide board and you're feeling down. You just have to focus on getting back on the grass and, and that's what I've done and, and now thankfully I'm back again. And are you help, able to maybe help other players through, through injury problems, having suffered some yourself? I'd like to think that, yeah, you can help people with their experiences. Um, but do you know what? This is going to sound pretty strange, but the one person that sort of got me through this is Sam Habergan. To go in every day on the days when you're feeling low and you see Sam Habergan, the way he works and the way he goes about his business in the gym, my injury is nowhere near as what's severe as what Sam is. But you go in in the morning and you see Sam with the same dedication and motivation and you're feeling sorry for yourself, you look at him and go, hang on a minute, if he can do that, I can get through this. So he's been my focus every morning. You go in, you see Sam Habergan doing his work, you know that you can do it and he's been brilliant for me during this period. And he, he could be a role model for, for others that are injured as well. 
he's the role model for every injured player I've ever come across. I've never met anybody who has his work ethic and deals with it the way he has. So if anybody is injured and needs advice, go speak to Sam Habergan because he's the attitude and the behaviour that you need to get through an injury. So you, you're all fit and ready to go. Are you going to be knocking on the door trying to get a starting place on, on Wednesday? That's out of my control. All I can do is train hard and then if I ever get the opportunity, I know that I'm in a place where I'm, I can do the best that I can. Uh, and finally, last time at Twitch came, it was a magical night at Sidsall Bank. The fans played a, a real part and hopefully they, they can again. They're huge. They're, they're a massive part of this football club and the journey it's been on. And, and we can't be grateful enough for, for what they do and what they've done for us over the last few years. And if we get a sell sold out at Sidsall Bank, it's not a nice place for opposition to come and, and they can definitely help us get through this time. Okay, thank you. Um, Lee, you owe a great deal of thanks to the support team at the club as well, the people who help we get back in shape, sort of uh, coming to rehab from the injury. <coughs> Yeah, we have a lot of people here who put a lot of time into the football club and the players. Um, I think you take Mike Kine, Luke Treadwell on the medical department and Luke Jelly. I think they tell you their job here is near enough 24-7. Mm. They're available all around the clock and the work that they put in is not recognised enough in my opinion. They've been brilliant throughout the whole thing. Um, obviously you got through an hour at the, the game last week. Do you think, think you still, still need a little bit more game time before you go into starting a game? Or? Um, How far off are you? Did, did well, match fitness-wise, I'm obviously quite well away off. Mm. Um, but I got through 60 minutes the other night, um, which is obviously a great stepping stone for me. So I know in my own mind I can do 60 minutes, and at a push you could probably do 70, 80. Um, whether I'm fit enough to play 90 minutes, only time will tell. But in my own mind, I'm training hard. I've got through 60 minutes. I'm not worried about my groin. So, so therefore, yeah, I'm, I feel like I could, could play a game, yeah. You mentioned Sam Pabagam there. How, how is he? How's he doing? He's doing well. He's um, doing as well as could be expected, but he's got such a, a strange injury. Um, and it's been a hard... I think he's been out for, for 18 months now. Um, and every time he gets close, he has a little setback. So I'm not sure exactly how far away he is or, or what, but you have to speak to the medical team and him about that. But all I know is if anybody's going to get back fit, it's going to be him because his attitude is, is unbelievable. In terms of having to watch, what you like at watching, and is it tougher when the team is struggling for results as they have done in recent weeks? I'm a terrible watcher of football, yeah. Um, my whole life I've wanted to play football. Um, how can I describe what? Do you know what it's like? It's like being at school, right? It's lunchtime, you're looking forward to lunch, the kids are outside playing football, and you've got to sit inside and write lines and watch them through a window. <laughs> That's what it feels like. You're in the gym every morning, all you want to do is go outside and train with your teammates, and you're in that gym on a slide board, on a growing machine. And you just want to be out there helping them and wanting to play football. And when you can't do that, like I said, being injured is the most frustrating thing. And you feel helpless because you can't do anything to help your teammates out. And, and ultimately, that, that's all I want to do. And obviously, it's been quite a transitional period with the change of manager. I'm sure there'll be new players coming in in January. What do you think is a realistic target between now and the end of the season? To win as many football matches as we can. That, that's all we can do. Um, we're obviously not in a, a great one of form at the moment and the league table doesn't look pretty. We don't want to be that end, we'd rather be on the other end of the table. But the only way we do that is by winning football matches and, and we need to do whatever we can to, to win games and hopefully move up that table. Um, and I suppose that the standard of League One hasn't surprised you. It, it, it's clearly a significant step up from League Two. It is a step up, yeah. And I think um, a lot of people maybe, maybe didn't realise that. But... We have moved up a division and, and it is more difficult. Um, there's a lot of better teams in there, so we maybe have found it a little bit more difficult than some people may have expected, but we're soon realising it's, it's not going to be easy and uh, we're going to have to turn our fortunes around and pick up some points quickly. Yeah, because MK Dons and Tramby haven't found it easy either, have they? So it's, uh, exactly, that just shows, doesn't it? It's, um, it's a step up and if you get promoted, then you're going to be competing with, with better teams and better players and it's always going to be difficult when that's the case. Yeah, thanks, Lee. While you're one of us, Lee, you obviously been here as a lad and come back and joined us. What's been your love of FA Cup experiences? Not very good ones, if I'm honest, Chris. Um, I've never really been fortunate enough to, to have an FA Cup run. Um, so let's start one now for me personally. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Michael, FA Cup, perfect chance to bounce back from Saturday. Yeah, it is, obviously. Um, the last time we played, uh, 10 days or so ago, um, good game down at, at their place, and uh, they're obviously a team that's flying high in the top of the league. So, um, another opportunity for us um, at Central Bank. Hopefully, there'll be a decent crowd, and uh, you know, a cup tie under the lights, obviously, is a little bit different anyway. Can you take a lot from the first performance against Ipswich into this replay? I think we can. I think um, I do believe we should have we should have gone through on the day. Uh, we certainly had the much better chances on the day. There's no doubt about that. Um, got hit a little bit with a sucker punch in terms of their goal and the way it came about. Um, but uh, the spirit they showed, obviously going going from a situation where it should have been comfortable with a penalty, etc., to then concede, but to come back as the way they did in the game was good. And what reaction are you expecting following Saturday's game? Um, well, it'd be difficult not to get a positive reaction. Um, so um, that doesn't mean that we're going to win the game by any stretch of the imagination, because it's going to be tough. But um, yeah, I, I'm sure that there will be a reaction. I've got no doubt about that. I'm pretty confident the performance will be ten times better. Um, these things happen in football. Um, that's not quite happened for me yet, so I suppose I've been lucky. I've lost games as a manager and you accept that because it's part and parcel of the job. Um, but in terms of losing games in the manner that we did, whether other people accept it, I won't accept it. So that's why I was uh, slightly angered. Are you feeling calmer about it now? Yeah, I am. Um, only a little bit. Um, but um, yeah, no, like I say, I'm, I've been a player myself, I've coached at all levels, um, managed at all levels, um, and like I say, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm relaxed, but it's part and parcel of the game to lose a game of football, you know, there's going to be a winner and a loser, sometimes you, you, know, you end up drawing, but I just won't accept losing in the manner that we did on Saturday. I don't care if we were playing Liverpool on Saturday. Um, you know, there's, there's a way to win and lose a game and that wasn't the way to lose one. And if you wanted to, to pick a game to bounce back in, the FA Cup's the perfect opportunity. It certainly is. You know, it's, it's a free hit, um, I suppose, you know, because there's not points on the line. We are coming up against a side that's probably expected to beat us um, with the quality that they've got. But... I think we've shown in the first game that we're more than capable of beating them and um, I'm sure they'll come with a, a side closer to what we'll probably expect in the two league games that we're going to face uh, coming up this season um, due to the fact that they, they've not had um, much football lately. Because they made lots of changes, didn't they, for the first game? You, you expect them to have a fully strength squad on Wednesday? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I can't read Paul's mind, but obviously... Um, you know, they never played on Saturday due to internationals. Um, the side that played in the Checker trade was similar, if not, well, it was a lot younger, actually, than the, the side that we played against. So um, they've got a few players and had the luxury to rest a lot of their, um, I suppose, first-choice players from what we've seen so far in the league this year. So, um, yeah, I fully expect it to be fully loaded uh, on Wednesday, Wednesday night. And will you be looking to use some more of your squad players? Um, well, there'll be changes, I can assure you that. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, if that answers your question, uh, there'll definitely, definitely be changes. And we've just been speaking to, to Lee Frecklington. How, how close is he to being part of the, the actual first team? Hopefully, hopefully close. Um, you know, he, he's trained a couple of weeks now to to what we'd expect. Um, he was in for a while where he was having to step out parts of the training. Um, I spoke to him on Friday night. He um, said he, you know, he felt reasonably good and he was as close to feeling as happy as he, he has been before the injury. Um, so that's a good sign to have that type of people around and in your team is very beneficial. It's obviously a big miss when they're not in the side and not in the group. Um, so. The sooner we can get him up to absolute full speed and full fitness, the better. <coughs> and that goes for some of the other players that obviously we've uh, we've got missing at the minute. And what are the injury updates, Michael O'Connor? <coughs> um, we're not too sure, if we're being honest. Um, he's had a, a scan, um, but 
it's not proven to be, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not 100%, you know, in terms of clear what exactly, you know, the exact problem is. So um, I think we'll be, um, you know, probably getting an opportunity to, to maybe get a second opinion on a, on a couple of things. Um, he's, um, he's okay in his, his self in terms of his frame of mind, but I think he wants a little bit of clarity and 100% um, to try and diagnose, you know, what the issue is, and then obviously we can move forward from it. Um, in terms of Bozzy, um, and Cokes, obviously they travelled with us as uh, the weekend, and I'm sure over the, the coming weeks they'll be, you know, looking to get involved. But it was probably too much of a risk for both of them on Saturday. Did every other player come through unscathed on Saturday? Um, physically, yeah, probably, yeah, because I can't remember us making a tackle. Um, <laughs> so yeah, maybe mentally scarred, um, which you'd expect. Um, and if they're not mentally scarred by now, they will be by the end of today. Um, so, but nah, joking apart, I think um, you know we'll go into the game on Wednesday. It's a different game. The game from Saturday's gone. Um, we can uh, look back at it and just you know almost promise ourselves between the group that you know we 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 don't ever you know put that type of performance in again. For, for you as a manager, how difficult is it to move on from games like Saturday? Easy in a way, um, because you have to, because the good thing is you've got games that come normally thick and fast. I think it would have been a lot more difficult if um, we'd been knocked out of the FA Cup. Um, bear in mind that obviously there's no game next week and uh, the next game then looking ahead will probably have been the, uh, the Burton game. So that would have been a lot more difficult because um, we would have been chomping at the bit, but we have got an opportunity to... Uh, certainly put things right in terms of performance on Wednesday. Are you hoping for a, a big crowd, Tinsel Bank, under the lights? Hopefully, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, um, since I've come in, um, our performances and results at Tinsel have been pretty good, so um, hopefully that will continue on Wednesday. And if you can't get yourself up for a, a cup game under the lights on a Wednesday night at Tinsel Bank, you shouldn't be playing football, should you? Absolutely not, and that's why, you know, at the end of the day, even when you're going through difficult periods as a manager, um, and as a club, you what it does, it gives you absolute clarity on the people around you. So, you know, whether that's the people you're working with, your players, etc. Um, it, 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 you almost learn more, you do, um, because you see people in difficult moments. And the reality is you learn nothing uh, sometimes when you're in that space and that place where you're winning games and sometimes it can sort of paint over the cracks a little bit. And finally, how, how important is an FA Cup run for you? Massively. I mean, obviously, I've had pretty good success with Cup runs, um, whether that be the League Cup, FA Cup, you know, the, the, the FL, the League Trophy. Um, I did it as a player as well a couple of times. Um, so I've got to the quarterfinals, you know, um, a couple of times as a, as a coach, manager. Um, just missed out uh, as a player as well. So... Um, Excited! It's a good competition. It's the best competition I think. I can, it's the one I remember as a small kid and growing up. So, um, yeah, very much uh, look forward to every time it comes around. Okay, thank you, Michael. Did you miss Michael O'Connell on Saturday? <laughs> that's, the, <laughs> yeah. that's probably the easiest question that anyone's yeah. ever asked me. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, mean, I think I've made the, my point so far. That since I've been at the club, he's key to us just, just in terms of his experience, his know-how, his positional sense. Um, you've only got to look at games that when we've had him in the team and not in the team and games where we've had him in the team and then he's had to come off because of injury or what it may be, the, the, how the performance goes from there to, mm. to there slightly. So, listen, he's a key player, that type of player. We haven't got many and I suppose that's where, um, in terms of addressing what we need and where we need to strengthen. Um, we've got some some good attacking midfield players, um, but um, yeah, it, it's. I think it was obvious to see that you know it was a big miss to us. But the nature of his injury is it a hamstring issue or something? It or is, it? Yeah. but obviously it, it's it's close to it's like a very low towards the knee, mm. so obviously um, he's had issues in the past in that area, so. It's one of them where you almost want to isolate it 
you know, is it an issue to the back of his knee or is it like the, the lower part of the hamstring? So um, I think it's important to get different opinions when you, you have these really delicate delicate injuries. When you see the players in training, how much of today will be spent talking about Saturday? Will you show them the video of the game? Or? No, no, I've made that decision. Obviously, uh, I've no, I haven't done it much in my career, um, but we'd, we'd end up spending hours going over you know negative things so I think I think it's important to um, to discuss it 100% um, but I think you've got to move on pretty quickly you know since they've came in here the performances have been really good and I've been pleased with them um, yes a couple of results haven't gone our way um, did I see Saturday come in the way it did no it didn't um, yes you know we we had certain players that had to come in and do a job and it didn't quite happen but you know um, I think it's important to move on pretty quick. Do you want to hear certain answers from them at all? About oh yeah, there'll happened? be discussion but we won't be sitting uh, talking for hours watching a video, what point is that going to do? Yeah. You know, but yes, absolutely, you know, there'll be a discussion uh, but it won't be a long one, um, not one for looking back anyway. It's the point of looking back, you've got to look forward. Um, it'll only affect what happens on Wednesday if we spend too much time worrying about Saturday. On, on the game on Wednesday, is it advantageous to you that it's on a Wednesday rather than a Tuesday? Because they've got a game on Saturday, haven't they? Yeah, possibly. I mean, um, I hope you're right. <laughs> I hope that's the case. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, I still think, obviously, um, you know, the way that, that the sort of games have panned out, um, I still fully expect it to be a pretty strong side. Done any penalty practice? Uh, no, I'm not, I'm not a massive one for it, you know. Um, I know there's, there's good and bad. Um, I've been reasonably quite successful as a manager with penalties and it's not something that I've massively practised on. You just make sure that you pick players who are comfortable taking penalties who've been in them situations in the past. We'll be you know, more than prepared to know who we would want on the pitch at that moment in time if we felt that it was going to get to that. Um, and again, you know, I've played and worked with players who... <coughs> are pretty confident at the start of the game but I've had an absolute shocker and you know it's not a good thing to maybe allow them to step up and take a penalty at a crucial time. You've got an extended break after Wednesday's game before the next league game. Mm. What what are you going to be doing during that period? Are the players going to have some time off? Are you going to arrange a practice game? Or yeah, like a bit of both, bit of both really. I think that the players will get a little bit of time off. I think they need it to be honest with you. Uh, I think sometimes that can be you know, very bene beneficial to, to everybody. But. Um, There'll be a point where obviously we regroup and look forward to obviously what's going to be a busy period because we come back into a situation uh, where there's going to be a lot of games in a short space of time um, and obviously um, when we do hit that period with the, the league games, um, there are going to be some really crucial games for us. Uh, is your recruitment work stepping up as we get close to January? Yeah, absolutely, yeah, yeah, no, I mean... Um, Especially, you know, over the next probably ten days or so, um, there's some hopefully some key and interesting meetings for me to uh, take part in. Are you quite positive about the way it's gone so far? Yeah, I li listen. The only disappointment I've had since I've come here in general was Saturday. Mm. You know, so um, and I, like I say, I've uh, I've managed quite a few games, um, and um, you know, I've mentioned it already. That was, was difficult for me after the game Saturday mm -hmm. to try and keep my emotions in check as I've ever had you know and I've lost a couple of finals at Wembley as well and you know stuff but that was a that was a tough one thanks Michael okay. um, how are you going to deal with the aftermath of Saturday's loss trying to put it a bed as quickly as <coughs> possibly can really um, you know it's um, I've already said it you know it's one of them if you spend too much time dwelling on the past um, and that's good and bad, you know, sometimes you can spend too much time taking all the plaudits for a, a good performance um, and I think you've got to move on very, very very quickly because in football people are prepared to smack you in the face <coughs> as much as you possibly can so we'll get over it very, very quickly, we'll move on to Wednesday, we've got an important game to look forward to on Wednesday and obviously, you know, trying to get through to the next round. And is there anything you've learned from your previous cup runs that you'll use at Lincoln? Yeah, yeah, I mean, obviously, well, I think first and foremost, um, no matter who you're playing, um, you've got to you've got to be uh, ultra-competitive and um, obviously if we don't, we're not ultra-competitive on uh, 
Wednesday night, then we're going to find ourselves in a difficult situation, as we did on, on Saturday. We did it in the first game, certainly expect us to do it again on Wednesday, and hopefully we'll get the right end of the result. Do you see the victory on Wednesday as being an end to a means, not only in getting through to the second round, but obviously the prize money mm. and, and the gate money and the gate money from the next round, yeah. although it may not be anything substantial. Do you think that will help you towards your recruitment? Uh, hopefully, hopefully. Um, I, I, don't, I don't see um, you know, not getting through being too much of a hamper to that because I think it's obvious, you know, I'm thinking, stating the obvious that, that there needs to be improvements and, and, and additions, but um, it would certainly help that and ease that. Um, I think um, the fact that, you know, we have got some key and big and important games between now and obviously January um, is going to be important, but this is just as important any of them, like you say, because is an opportunity for us to um, make progress in the cup and obviously earn a little bit of cash by doing it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.